Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a drama, mystery, thriller film from 2017, titled A Day. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. On a plane flying back to Korea, famous Dr. Kim Joon Young is asked by the flight attendant to sign her magazine, which has his picture on the cover. Joon Young's co-worker, Yong Sun, encourages him to do so and even takes a photo of them together. After the flight attendant is gone, Yong Sun reminds Joon Young that they're running out of donations and this is good publicity. Half an hour later, when their plane lands, Joon Young checks his phone and notices his daughter Yoon Young hasn't answered a single one of his texts. At the moment, Yoon Young is walking through the city after school with two friends, who don't believe her dad is famous and tease her for not having him around for her birthday or to do normal things together like getting lunch. This puts her in a bad mood, so when she sees her dad is trying to call her, she ignores him. Back in the airport, Yong Sun is frustrated because Joon Young insists on being humble and not taking advantage of his fame. He had turned down the business class tickets the UN had offered him, and now he refuses to go out through the VIP gate. On their way out through the regular gates, they hear a mother calling for help for her child, and Joon Young doesn't hesitate to go to them, in just a couple of seconds, he saves the boy's life by helping him cough out the candy that had gotten stuck in his throat. He doesn't stay behind for pictures, he just rushes out while trying to call his daughter again to no avail. He's getting desperate, so Yong Sun helps him by giving him a bag of chocolates and candy for him to gift Yoon Young before asking him to solve things with both his daughter and their business. Joon Young is confused by this statement until he sees what is waiting for them at the gate, a group of reporters. Yong Sun has organized a small press conference without telling Joon Young because he knew he would say no. The airport gives him a small area where he can talk to the reporters about his work with the UN for the last three years. The news of his arrival appears on most channels, even the one currently on the TV at the arcade Yoon Young and her friends have gone to. Now they believe her dad is famous and she allows herself to look proud of him until Joon Young mentions that her getting sick three years ago was the inspiration for him to do voluntary work and Yong Sun cuts to clarify Yoon Young is healthy now, just a little bit temperamental. This embarrasses her in front of her friends and puts her in a bad mood again. After the press conference is over, Joon Young finally gets a text from his daughter telling him off for embarrassing her and making him promise he'll be on time to meet her or she'll leave. Joon Young improves her mood a bit by promising her lots of gifts and punctuality. Joon Young gets in his car and drives away to meet his daughter, only finding a small delay when he goes through the toll booths and the clerk drops his change, so she has to count it again. He almost makes it in time but when he's nearby the area he was going to meet Yoon Young at, he sees a crash has occurred, so he stops to help. The car involved in the accident is a taxi, and Joon Young gently takes the driver out before checking on the passenger, a woman that sadly is already dead. When the paramedics arrive, he tells them about the driver's status before calling his daughter to tell her he'll be late, but a man answers his phone telling him she's been in an accident. It's then that Joon Young realizes that the person the cab has run over is Yoon Young. Before he can even react, Joon Young blinks and suddenly finds himself back on the plane with the flight attendant in front of him asking for his autograph. He goes with the flow and signs the magazine again, but he can't stop being weirded out by how his day seems to be repeating. Yong Su tells him the same exact thing, he predicts the kid choking on his candy, and the press conference is waiting for him at the gate. This time the situation makes him too nervous to even finish the interview, so he just leaves for the parking lot and texts Yoon Young. He tries to convince her to let him pick her up, but she turns him down and tells him to meet him at the usual place. He begins driving while trying to call her, but she won't answer, so by the time he makes it to the toll booth, he's too anxious to wait for his change when the clerk drops it and leaves without it. Sadly, by the time he makes it to the scene of the accident, he's too late, Yoon Young is already dead. As Joon Young drops to his knees in front of her, the day resets again. This time, he isn't patient, he runs out of the regular gate hallway, taking the boy's candy with him, and he takes the VIP gate to get to the parking lot without seeing the reporters. He texts Yoon Young and tells her they must cancel their meeting, which prompts her to call him and express how much she hates him being a distant father. She tells him she'll wait for him until he comes before hanging up, so Joon Young gets worried again and takes the road on his car by breaking the speed limits, even driving through the toll booth without even paying. In his hurry, he takes a one-way street and gets stuck in front of a car coming from the opposite direction. By the time he manages to leave, he's late again. The day resets once more and this time, Joon Young leaves the airport driving like a madman. Now he knows to avoid the one-way street, but he ends up crashing into an alley and having to make his way to the scene of the accident on foot, so he's late again. During the next reset, since trying to talk to his daughter is pointless, Joon Young grabs the cab driver's phone and learns his number, so when the day resets again, he calls the driver to warn him about the accident, but the man hangs up on him. This time, when he rushes out of the airport at top speed, he takes him on finished roads and makes it to the scene a couple of minutes earlier, but all this allows him to do is see the exact moment his daughter gets hit by the cab. Joon Young has a breakdown in front of his daughter, 
but suddenly he's grabbed by a man that tells him every day is the same except for him. This man is Lee Minchel, one of the paramedics that Jun Young talked to when the accident happened the first time. While his co-worker had checked on the driver, Minchul had looked into the cab and found that the dead woman inside was his wife Mikyung. Before he could even react, the day reset for him as well. He tried to call his wife but she wouldn't pick up the phone, so after using a couple of resets to try to get to the scene of the accident earlier and failing, he started using his time to search for her, but none of her friends knew where she was. He did notice however, that in every reset Jun Young was different, and this time is the first time he gets to approach him before the day ends. They only have a few seconds left though, so Jun Young tells him they should meet and talk once the day begins again. During the next reset, the two men meet at an abandoned road and share their experiences. It seems it's impossible to stop the accident from happening, so instead, they should stop their girls from getting there in the first place. They let the day restart and this time, Jun Young does go to the press conference to use it as a way to talk to Yun Young, since she wouldn't pick up her phone. She sees him on TV telling her that he's changing their meeting spot to Central Park, which embarrasses her in front of friends again and she doesn't listen to her dad. After the conference, Jun Young calls Mi Kyung, who had had a fight with Minchul so she wasn't picking up his calls either, but she does answer Jun Young. He tries to warn her about the accident but it's too late, she's getting into the cab as they speak and of course, a moment later, the accident happens again. The day resets again so the men change their tactics. Jun Young does talk to Yun Young during the conference once again, but this time, he doesn't only change their meeting place, he also tells her he loves her and promises he won't be late, and these words warm her up a bit to the request. Meanwhile, knowing that they can't stop his wife from getting into the cab, Minchul decides that they need to stop the cab itself. He hits his head with a brick and goes to the police, telling them he's been a victim of a hit and run and giving them the cab's license plate for the cops to stop it. While waiting for the police to do their jobs, Minchul remembers the argument he had with Mi Kyung the day before all this started. They had fought over the subject of having a baby, Mi Kyung wanted one now and was even willing to give up her studies and work instead, but Minchul disagreed, he also wanted a kid but he felt they need to wait a couple of years until he got his promotion. By the end of the fight, Mi Kyung wasn't talking to him anymore. A moment later, the cops and Jun Young make it to the scene of the accident, except there's no accident. Thinking they've managed to save the day, Jun Young calls Minchul and tells him they can meet later to celebrate before going to the park to meet his daughter. In the meantime, the cops manage to find the cab and when they approach it, the driver escapes at high speed. The police go after him, and the chase is heard by Minchul through the ambulance's intercoms, so he begins making his way to the park as well. As Jun Young looks for his daughter at the park, he receives a call from a strange number, it's the taxi driver, telling him that he saw the press conference and knows he changed their meeting spot. This only means Yoon Young will die there instead of on the street like she should have died three years ago. Getting desperate, Jun Young rushes through the park and checks on every little girl until he finds his daughter right as the taxi is arriving, so he puts himself between the car and Yoon Young, only for the day to reset again. After waking up, Min Chul calls Jun Young and tells him what he's discovered. After the crash at the park, he checked the back of the car and discovered his wife had already been dead. The taxi driver is killing Yoon Young and Mi Kyung on purpose, and the day is repeating for him as well, which is why they can't stop him. The two men decide to search for information about someone they met three years ago that could fit the bill. Jun Young uses the database of the hospital he used to work at and continues to be welcomed in, while Minchul goes back to the police station, this time using the brick to knock out the cop and using his computer. Three years ago, Yoon Young had been terribly ill and the only way for her to survive was a heart transplant. One stormy night, she and Jun Young were incredibly happy when they thought they had found a donor, but he quickly went from happy to upset when he learned that the dead kid's guardian refused to donate their child's organs. Meanwhile, Minchul was making his rounds in the ambulance and got distracted for a second, which almost made him crash against a car. He dodged it just in time, but the car went off the road and crashed anyway. Minchul checked on the victims and got them in his ambulance to take them to the same hospital where Yoon Young was waiting for a heart. Back in the present, a group of cops find Minchul at the station and arrest him, but before the day resets again, Minchul manages to see the name of the crash victim from three years ago on the computer, it's Lee Kang Sik, the same man that has been driving the cab. Kang Sik wakes up every morning in a depressed state and sees on TV that Jun Young would give a press conference at the airport, meaning he's back in the country, and this is Kang Sik's opportunity to act. Now that they have a name, Jun Young goes to Kang Sik's apartment and finds it empty, but he also finds the paperwork from his hospital stay three years ago and pictures of his son Lee Haru, whose name means day. Jun Young then remembers the rest of what happened that day and tells the full story to Minchul when he arrives at the apartment as well. That stormy night, Haru arrived at the hospital a little too late, he already was brain dead. Kang Sik was unconscious after surgery and couldn't consent to allow his son's heart to be donated, so Jun Young forged his signature and grabbed the sleeping man's hand to force his fingertip on the paperwork. After hearing this, Minchul punches Jun Young for what he did, 
And now they have no other choice but to wait for the day to reset as a grieving Kang Sik drove at high speed to kill Yun Yun yet again. When the day restarts, Minchul rushes to the scene of the accident to try to talk to Kang Sik and ask him to spare Mi Kyung because she has nothing to do with what happened, but Kang Sik is unconscious. Jun Young, however, doesn't leave the airport as he always does. He stays in his car and watches the video Yun Young sent her the night before her surgery, because he left the country to do voluntary work after handing in the forged paperwork and didn't stay to see his daughter get better, the guilt was too much. After yet another reset of Minchul searching for his wife to no avail and Jun Young's apathy disappearing when he almost lets the boy choking with the candy die, the two men meet to discuss the problem. Jun Young wants to save Kang Sik to apologize and beg for his forgiveness, which could possibly get him to stop the murders, but Minchul disagrees. He wants to kill the man for what he's done, but first he must find his wife, so the men part ways there. Minchul goes home to search for clues of where Mi Kyung could be. He's about to give up when he notices something on her calendar, she stopped circling the day of her period a few months ago. Minchul finally realizes what's going on and why they argued about babies the other day, Mi Kyung is pregnant, and he can't find her any of the usual places because she's at the doctor's getting a baby sonogram. So Minchul starts calling a bunch of different obstetricians offices to find his wife. Meanwhile, Jun Young goes to the scene of the accident and puts Kang Sik's body in his car before the paramedics arrive. He takes him to his hospital and gives him a couple of injections to keep him alive while he apologizes for his actions. At first, he had thought the time loop had been God's blessing to help him save his daughter, but now he thinks it's hell for having seen her die so many times. He tells Kang Sik that he had been desperate that night and any father would have done the same, which Kang Sik agrees with, yes he also would have done the same, but that also means Jun Young can sympathize in return because if this had happened to him, Jun Young would be seeking revenge too. Kang Sik hesitated many times before killing Yun Young, but thinking about Haru was enough to keep him going, and so he admits he'll never stop killing Yun Young. Jun Young begs him to kill him instead, but it's too late, Kang Sik is dying and can't talk anymore. Minchul calls Jun Young then and tells him he's found his wife, suddenly getting shocked when he looks at his watch and notices the day is lasting longer than usual. As a group of cops enters the room to arrest him, Ju Young realizes what is the real trigger for the loop, the day restarts whenever Kang Sik dies. The day resets again and Minchul rushes to see his wife, but when he arrives at the obstetrician's office, he overhears Mi Kyung saying she's considering terminating the pregnancy and now he can't stop thinking how sad she was before every time she died. He calls Jun Young to tell him this and ignores his warnings when he swears he's going to kill Kang Sik before hanging up. Jun Young still remembers Kang Sik's number from when he memorized it during one of the first loops, so he calls him and tries to warn him, but it's too late, Minchul is already getting into the taxi. He stabs Kang Sik on the shoulder and then the two men start struggling with each other as Minchul tells him of Mi Kyung's pregnancy. Kang Sik isn't moved by these words and reminds him that the night of the accident, Minchul at first had run away and only came back a moment later to save them. If he hadn't hesitated, perhaps his son would be alive. The two men begin hitting each other with various parts of the car before Kang Sik finally manages to push Minchul off him, and once he's out of the cab, he begins driving at high speed to reach Yun Yun at the usual time. Jun Young is making his way there as well, and this time, he manages to arrive before the accident happens. He puts his car between Yun Yun and Kang Sik, saving his daughter and causing the cab to overturn. After taking Yun Yun to a safe spot and asking her to wait because he has something important to do, Jun Young goes back to the cab and tries to get Kang Sik out, which proves difficult because his leg is stuck in the wreckage. Kang Sik can't understand why he's trying to save him, so Jun Young explains that the day resets with his death, which means the loop was created by Haru, who lives within Yun Yun, to save his dad. Killing Yun Yun and her donated heart would equal killing Haru again. At that moment, a furious Minchul arrives in his ambulance, so Jun Young hurries up and drags Kang Sik out of the cab before Minchul crashes against it. Still not wanting to give up, Minchul grabs his knife and approaches Kang Sik, but Jun Young jumps on him and tries to stop him. In their struggle, Minchul accidentally stabs Jun Young, who still insists Kang Sik shouldn't be killed even he dies like this, because it means his daughter, Mi Kyung and her baby get to live. Meanwhile, Kang Sing sees Yun Yung nearby and with Jun Young's words still echoing in his mind, he comes closer as he remembers how the girl had talked to him while he was in the hospital and asked him to survive because Haru lived in her. Finally seeing his son in her, Kang Sing hugs her and when he notices the car behind them catching on fire, he turns around and shields her from the explosion, causing another reset. This will be the last day this day repeats, because the three men know how to make things right now. Minchul goes to wait for his wife outside the obstetrician's office and after apologizing for his behavior, he tells her he wants to have the baby. After she gets a message from an unknown number saying I'm sorry, Mi Kyung tells him the baby is a girl, and Minchul decides they should name her Haru. Kang Sink goes to see Yun Yung and shows her a picture of Haru. Yun Yung likes finally meeting him and asks Kang Sink what his favorite food was. When he answers chocolate, Yun Yung laughs, 
because she used to hate sweet stuff but since the surgery, she craves chocolate all the time. Kang Sink also gets a text message, he says thank you. Meanwhile at the airport, Jun Young tells Yong Sun about what he did. Yong Sun is upset to hear it but also thinks it should stay in the past now that it's over, however Jung Young doesn't listen. When the time for the press conference comes, he confesses his crime in front of the cameras for the whole world to hear. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.